of Faith. Faith plays no favorites. It could happen to you. Book 82, page 216. In the Diary of Faith. A man of singular purpose and great tenacity of will who used these talents to bring about his own destruction. He had his choice, as have all mortals. And because of a little thing, a letter he caused to be held up in delivery, Hendrik Potanoff came to know the real meaning of faith. His life record lies open before me. And for a moment, I, fate, look to a single horrible incident. There, you lousy screw. I hope it killed you. I gotta move fast. Legs weak, awful dark. The door is unlocked. I'm out of the incline. The sunlight, my eyes, are blinding me. Oh! Oh! Hendrick, where are you, Hendrick? Yes, Henrik Paranoff, you had a choice, and your decision was for evil. Soon it will be time to write the final entry in the record of Henrik Paranoff. And when I have written, I shall read from his page in The Diary of Faith. <laughs> has been credited with 22 years of payment on his debt to society. He is scheduled to be paroled soon. But 7,000 nights have not bred repentance in his heart. 22 years of resentment at confinement are symbolized in his hate of Sarah Hedy. If it hadn't been for Sarah refusing to testify that she was with me that night, if it hadn't been for Sarah's jealousy of Molly. If it hadn't been for Sarah. Hey. Hey, Hendrick. What's your saying? Yeah. I've been listening to that every night for nearly 21 years. But only 30 more times till I get out. <laughs> like a hand the he'd find he's bumped off his feet today, eh? Yeah. You know, dummy. Huh? You hear the bull coming to me. Fifteen two o two. Yeah. Oh, Hendrick. No letter for you tonight. <laughs> Do I ever get letters? No. Uh, I guess not. Uh, too bad about Swede getting shot trying to escape today. Uh, sure, they come and go. Swede was only here eight years. Hardly time for a shave and a haircut. <laughs> but had I now. Been for Sarah's life. But hadn't been for Sarah Hedrick. Yes, to Hendrik Potanoff, even freedom meant only one thing an opportunity for revenge on Sarah Hedrick. His decision for evil was 3,000 times confirmed. Nightly, he warmed his face at memory's fire. Recalled again with bitter recrimination a courtroom scene of more than 20 years before. Gentlemen of the jury, you have heard the evidence against the defendant. You will now retire to the jury room and return to the police to first. But why wouldn't she testify, Molly? 
Wouldn't she do that for you, her sister? No. I got down on my knees and begged her. Well, she could save my neck. Did she tell them why I shot him and that she was with me? Oh, she's jealous because you married me instead of her. She claimed she stayed home alone that night. Oh, she lies. That was the night I took her out purposely to break the news that you and I had got married. Now she wouldn't admit it anyway. She just couldn't have been out with a man now being tried for murder. Only a week before she married John Hedrick, the banker. She sure decided to marry him off a sudden. She doesn't love him. She married him for spite after you married me. She just admitted it was a stick-up. And that Carver threatened us while we were parked there. They'd call it justifiable homicide and I'd go free. Even though they proved that you had trouble with Carver before? Oh, sure, that was just a coincidence. He was just a cheap stick-up on us. He didn't know it was me in that car until he shoved his face through the window. And once he'd seen that you had recognized him, then it was you or him. Well, of course. I let him have it before he could drill me. Oh, darling. If you just hadn't driven her home before you reported to the police station. Well, it seemed natural, though, because she was boarding Mattity already, and the shooting made her hysterical. I figured she'd corroborate my story when the time came. She wouldn't. And especially not now. It would ruin her social position. Mm. Her social position against a life sentence for me. Hendrick, would it do any good to let people know about our marriage? No, no, baby. But they don't know what hurts. If I do take a rap and they knew, he'd be labeled as the wife of a killer. I wouldn't care, darling. Believe me. I know it, Molly, but in case I am convicted, you can do me more good as the unmarried sister of the influential John Hedrick. Now, don't let anybody know about our marriage. <gasps> Well, then you think you will be convicted? I'm afraid so. Without Sarah's story, the district attorney has made it look like a plain case of bad blood between us. With me taking Carter for a ride. What can I do? Just go on living with Sarah and John. Use your time and opportunity to work on her. And maybe, maybe someday, you can get her to listen to me. Well, I'll do it, darling. I'll do anything. It'll be hard. I'll be hard on both of us. We won't be able to exchange the letters. Oh, no, darling. I've got to hear from no. you. No. No, don't write. Pretend you've forgotten me. Otherwise, Sarah will always be jealous of you and never help. I'll wait for you. And love you always. decade of fuel for Hendrick's hatred. While Hendrick Potanoff suffered his imprisonment, Sarah, too, had paid great penance. She had carried a guilt. But the tiny details that brought about the final humbling of her pride of circumstance were no mere coincidences. They were parts of a plan. A plan to set before Hendrick Potanoff an opportunity to overcome the sins of 20 years of hating. Well, so you're my new cellmate, huh? My name's Hendrick. They call me Olympic. What's yours, sir? Uh, William. They, they call me Bill. Glad to know you, Bill. Just arrived today? Uh, yeah. Hey, you can tell that by this shaved head. Mm-hmm. They'll call you fish till it grows out of you. Sit down. I'll tell you a few things about your new boarding school. Yeah? A new man always gets the bottom bunk. You get up at six, leave cells at seven, eat and work back in cells at six. Lights out at nine. Baseball at church on Sunday. If you've made your task in the mill. One hundred yards of good cloth. And then there's the two most important rules of all. The official rule... Stop whatever you're doing and stand still when you hear one blast of a whistle. Hmm? Hey, what's that mean? It's the gunboat's only warning before they shoot. And they seldom miss. And uh, what's the second? Our unwritten law. 
Don't be a stool pigeon. Now, well, uh, thanks for the advice. You've been here long? Nearly 22 years. That's a whole lot of time. I'm only 21 years old. And I've had something to keep me occupied. What are you in for? Me? Oh, hit and run. One to five years. It was really an accident, but I lost my head and drove off. It was your first offense, as you think your folks could have gotten you off on probation. You got a family? Yeah. Just my mother and dad and Aunt Molly. Molly? <laughs> I knew a girl named Molly once. What's your dad do? Well, he's a banker. Number one citizen in our town. That's why he couldn't go to bat to help me. Everyone in Milford would have said he used his pool to get me off just because I was his son. Mm-hmm. You're from Milford? Yeah. You've got an Aunt Molly? And your dad's a banker? Bill, what's your last name? Eddie. What do you mean? They call me Bill. My father's name is John and mother's name is Sarah. <laughs> Yes, Hendrik Potanoff, I, fate, made your path cross to give you a chance to prove yourself worthy of freedom. You have a choice for good or for evil. But if your decision be for evil, the end is certain. And now it is time for another entry. And when I have written, I will read from the record of Hendrik Potanoff in the Diary of Fate. punishment have balanced the scales, there is given a second chance. For evil done, payment is made in the coin of sorrow and pain that comes as surely as the dawn of tomorrow. The parole board believed your protestations, Hendrik Potanoff. You begged for one more chance. And now I, fate, intervene. A tiny twig. A gust of fitful wind, a letter unreceived. Sometimes mortal plans miscarry and themselves ensnare the plotters. If you, Hendrik Potanoff, were to become involved in a violation of the prison rules, your parole would be forfeit. 13202. Here. 54629. Here. Oh, let me. Well, let's see. Here's a letter for... Here, you, William Hedick? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. You can't have mail. What? I've got a ducat for you from the captain's office. Yeah, but... I... All your privileges are suspended for 30 days for failing to make tasks this week. Yeah, but there's some mistake. I did make task. I made 10 yards over task. Don't argue, fish. An officer checked the orders. You were 10 yards short of task. Now, you better make it next week or you'll get 30 days in the hole. Uh, oh... Solitary confinement, Fish. <laughs> Ask Limpy. He can tell you all about it. <laughs> oh, no good screw. Hey, look. Listen to me. Don't worry about the hole. I'm the trusty down there. If you ever get sent there, listen for three taps on the ventilator. I'll talk to you for a few. And I'll tell you what to do to yourself. Yeah, thanks, pal. I, I don't mind losing the other privileges. Never think that we have her. It was probably from Mom, and I... I haven't heard from her since I got here. Oh, that's tough. But look, Bill. Next week, you'll make 20 extra yards. Then you can go see the captain. He'll give you your privileges back. So you'll only have to wait a week to get your letter. He will. Yeah, but how can I make 20 yards extra? I worked as fast as I could this last week. Oh, leave it to me. My pal Tony is the head loon tender in the mill. 
Hey, Tony. Yeah. I asked her last week to help my pal Bill. Now I want you to give him the works. Fix him up with lightweight shuttles and that small gear on his loom. Yeah, but still he's not still speaking. If he was caught, Bill, I'd lose my good time. You'd lose you for a rope. Huh? I'll vouch for it, Bill. You speed up his loom. You're my pal, Henry. I'll fix him up. You got me. Yeah, Mike, they're giving the weight. He gets the fastest loom in the mill. <laughs> Real fast, huh? Make lots of yards. William Hattie? I here, sir. I warned you last week. Here's a ducket for you from the captain's office. Says you ruined 120 yards of cloth, state property. Yeah, but it was good cloth, honest. It was all thin. <laughs> High-speed shuttles and gears were found on your loom in violation of the regulations. Where'd you get them? Well, the po- I, I don't know. I, I don't know anything about it. Okay, wise guy. I'll come back as soon as I finish my count. And you can tell me who's speeded up that loom or be ready to go to the hole. Seven days in the hole. Maybe, maybe I've heard men die of consumption down there, go crazy, get shot. What, what do I tell them, maybe? That depends on whether you're regular or stool pigeon. You can squeal on me and Tony and save yourself a month in the hole. Yeah, but you'd lose your parole. That's right. He's quiet, he's coming back. Well, Eddie... You made up your mind to be sensible and talk, or you go to the hole? I'm no stool pigeon, screw. Let's go. Yes, Hendrik Potanoff narrowly escaped his own trap. But it is written that no man can forever escape the reaping of his sowing. Unnoticed and unheeded, the threads of circumstance bind him to a doom as certain as his plan is evil. To William's confidence in him, Hendrik Potanoff then added a second factor of influence. His was the only voice William would hear. Oh, that's Lindy. Good old Lindy. He didn't forget me. Bill. Bill. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah, well, Lindy. Oh, God, it's good to hear a voice. Oh, okay, I guess. It's just that well, there's nothing to do. Can't see. It's black dark. I can't stand up straight. Can't stretch out. I don't know how long I've been here. I'm awful hungry. No, no, nothing. Not even bread. Just water. But it's sore because they found a small knife in my trousers. I, I don't know how it got there. Okay, the what can I do? Wise. You have to stand up your rest. When the screw comes with your water, cuss him out. Tell him they can't get after you. Get back. The manager can cuss. Sure, sure. Hendrick, Hendrick, don't go away, Hendrick. Here's your water, wise guy. Pass out your bucket. Now, you lousy screw, where's my food? You give me my food or I'll... I'll your play. what? Threatening an officer, huh? Well, just for that... No water. Hey, come back. Give me my water. Give me my food. Give me my food. Legs weak. It's almost dark. Here's the door. Unlocked. Now to run up the 
I'm blind. Sunlight in my eyes is blinding. Paul! Paul! Hey, Hendrick! Where are you? Hendrick! Hendrick! Your plan was successful, Hendrick Pottenoff. William Hedrick is dead. He made an easy target stumbling about in the blinding daylight. And no blame for William's death was attached to you by the prison authorities. But I, fate was waiting. Now the plan moved swiftly to its inevitable conclusion. And in a moment, I shall write the final entry on the page of Hendrik Patanoff in the Diary of Fate. of its own undoing. Perhaps a tiny thing, no greater than a sheet of paper. Before his death and for fear that its contents would identify and set William on his guard against you, Hendrik Patanoff, you had arranged to prevent his receiving a letter. And now the delicate scales of justice were slowly nearing inevitable balance. 13202? Yes. Oh, Limpy. It's too bad about your cellmate. You sure look happy, though. Oh, why not? Tomorrow morning I go through the main gate, head it out. Ah, oh, good luck. Put this letter for your ex cellmate with the rest of his belongings, will you? They'll be picked up and sent to his family tomorrow. So long. A letter for William Hedrick. Probably from his dear mother. Warning him to beware of old acquaintance, Hendrick Partner. <laughs> Taking a long time, sir, but I need you. <laughs> Let's see what you have to say. Dear Bill, you convicted you sent to prison. Who you know and experience. Robert Fortune, however, has given me the courage to write this letter. You are a man now, not a child. As you read this, please remember that anything I have done has been for your welfare. All of us have made mistakes. I had hoped that I would never have to tell you mine. But your need now is greater than my pride. When I was your age, I fell in love and secretly married. What do you know? This isn't from Sarah. It's from also me. was sent to I've always loved him. I'm still waiting for the day he comes out in the hope that we can live our remaining years happily together. She loves me. She's waiting for me. He's got my revenge on his prison. I want you to find him and show him this letter. His name is Hendrik Partenor. Having unjustly suffered much himself, I know he will guide and counsel you. Your time of punishment will not inhibit you towards society, but will return you to me, a wiser, more tolerant man. To me. To save your great handicap in life, you have been raised as Sarah's son. Only she and I have known that you are not. When you get out, Perhaps the three of us can spend many happy years together. For I am your real mother, Bill. And Hendrik Potanoff is your father. No, 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 it isn't true. It can't be true. <laughs> he was my son. Mine and Molly's. And, and I killed him, my own son. I didn't know it. It wasn't my fault. It was Sarah's fault. She made me kill him. It hadn't been for Sarah. Get away from me, Sarah. I had it. You're the devil. You tricked me. 
Fate trick me. Get off that boat. Get out of here. Hey, you, Andy, put that stool down. What's the matter with you? You blow your top. Get out of here. You stool down, I'll stand by, but Lippy, there's no one in there with you. You trying to get me? Don't you think I can see her sitting right there? She made me kill Bill, my son. Listen, you screwball. Bill wasn't your son, and he was just uh, trying to escape. You didn't have anything to do with it. Now put that stool down, dummy. I wouldn't have killed him if it hadn't been for you, sir. You made me do it, and now I'm going to beat your brains off. Now I'm going to kill you. Ready for that bar. Ready for that bar. Okay, boys. Come on, Ed. Bring the straight jack. I'll grab him. Now watch yourself. Put down that stool, and Grab him, boys. Yes, Hendrik Paranoff will pay for his crime in the still closer prison of a padded cell. For the rest of his life, he will each day scream in terror of his new cellmate, who will be with him always. A cellmate who cannot be paroled nor killed. For with hate, as he created his own nemesis, an invisible, implacable, everlasting tormentor, fear. Now it is time to close the book. In the case of Hendrik Potanoff, as in the cases of all mortals, I, fate, am but the instrument of a plan. The little things that pass unnoticed are my instrument. You do not recognize my hand in this, and that is well. So, when the time for decision is at hand, ponder long and carefully, and remember there is a page for you in the Diary of Faith. <laughs> cast included Herbert Lytton, Burl Wallace, Howard McNear, Barney Phillips, Irvin Lee, Ray Erlenborn, Ivan Dittmars, and Hal Sawyer. Diary of Fate is a Larry Finley transcription, brought to you from Hollywood. <laughs>